Hey, we're here at the NAMM show. I'm here with Kurt from Austrian Audio. Hi, guys. Hi, hey, Kyle. Th hey, thanks for your time. Show us what you got going on here. Yeah, we are here at our headphone wall. Um, so let me just start through. We have here our flagship, I I'd say. It's the 65, which is an open back headphone. It's a brilliant headphone for mixing, for mastering. It really gives you a nice reference. Still is really enjoyable to listen. So also for hi-fi freaks, it's a really cool choice. Cool. And you know the problem is with open back headphones, you cannot use them in every uh, use case. It's, it's sometimes you just need to have a closed back. So that's why we made the 60 and we tried to really create a, a, a closed back headphone Double acoustic, double acoustic wall, so it's really, it's really close. Um, that has almost the same sound like an open headphone. Oh, cool. It's quite unique. Most of the closed back headphones have, have terribly overboosted bass and stuff yeah. like that. Not this one. Really, really flat device. Okay. Nice. So um, they all share um, our own driver design, and the point about the driver is it's really fast. So it has a, a sp special material on the surrounding of the speaker, so it can move very widely, and so we can move a lot of air for the low end. We have a ring magnet, so the center of the speaker is open and the air can circulate, and that makes it really fast. And we have a really strong magnet, one, one Tesla in terms, uh, compared to others like having 0.5, so almost oh. double, cool. not almost, it's double. So, and that's what you need, because many, many other headphone designs were made in the 70s mm -hmm. and it was no problem about transients because transients in the in the from the sound source were killed by the tape where they yeah. recorded but nowadays we record everything yep. with our digital systems so we need um, uh, you need a headphone that need, can deliver a, that clarity exactly right? or yeah. even speakers and, yeah. and our headphones are really really fast cool another point is that comfort is a big big topic with headphones. We made some research before we started designing. We asked people what's the most important criteria for you on a headphone mm -hmm. and they said comfort yep. for, before sound. That's for me, I have big ears, right? And sometimes yeah. headphones can crush the yeah, ears. Yeah, and they, they touch all the time. So we, we got your extra spare here on the side. Um, it's really kind of deep. You see it's all full metal. Nice. Then you see on the headband there is here is some the form here, right? It, it spares out uh, the contact on the head on top of the head because that's the most sensitive area of the head. So you have the pressure here and here and not on top. Um, so you can wear these headphones for hours. Even our on-ear version is really, really comfortable. Um, same driver again. Soft. Yeah, Very soft right feels here. cozy, right? Yeah, it's nice. I cool. had them on on a, on a train ride for four hours. Here on this side, we come to the more affordable. I mean, there's, it's not like they are crazy expensive. They're handmade in Vienna. Wow. And, uh, and uh, the, the top model is at 429 if I'm not getting it right. Uh, wrong, <laughs> if I'm yeah. not getting it right. 429 yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's not so too bad. So here we come to a more affordable range, starting at 119 Okay. I'd say that's our workhorse. They all sh share the same acoustics. They all sound the same. This is a classic analog headphone. Still in this price range, it has a full metal band. It's foldable. All cables are detachable. It's hard with the microphones. Yeah. It has a memory foam. Cool. So in this price price range, you won't f find all of these features in one product. Yeah. It's quite unique. The, uh, the X25BT, we call it the hybrid headphone. So why is that? You can use it in three different modes. Either analog, like this one, that's what you need when you do music, because you can't deal with any latency. Mm -hmm. Or you're sitting again, train, playing, whatever, you have your laptop there, you want to do some edits of your recording, you can connect directly via USB-C, so there's a little audio interface in the headphone. Oh. Or you connect via Bluetooth wireless cool. if you're, I don't know, in the gym or in the subway, wherever. Yeah. Because we thought it kind of doesn't make sense to listen privately on, on another headphone, your, you know, your, your music, yep. than the one you're working on. You should yeah. always work on the same. Yeah, so you get monitor. used to that sound, right? Exactly. So you can listen to it while you're exactly. commuting. All, yeah. all we do when we mix is referencing, refer all the time. Yep. Right? Yeah, great point. Yeah. So, and here we have a, a, a headset versions for gamers and one which is more for office. 
The cool thing about it is the, the, the boom mic, it has a, a mute switch and it has kind of a really nice sonar sound, so it's not sounding cine at all. And uh, the, the headphone itself, it's like really a full musical headphone, so you can also listen on, to music very nicely. So we have a classical um, small condenser mic here or pencil mic. Mm -hmm. It's very, very robust. So it's, you can use it in the studio, you can use it on the road, on stage, no problem, don't be afraid. Um, it has a, a nice feature set, like you have a, a low cut on it and a pad switch. The microphone takes 156 dB SPL. I hope nobody of us is getting... Yeah, that's really high. It's yeah. really high. Yeah. And the, the, the important thing about pencil mics in, 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 in general is um, off-axis response. That's what's hard to get, right? It's on axis, so from the front side, yep. it's quite, I mean, it's not easy, but there are many good sounding microphones out there on axis. But yep. what is about the sound that comes from the side? The room sound, or if you're working with an ensemble and you have multiple musicians in yep. one room, you will have spill. You can't, yep. it's, it's just physics, they are there, okay? So if the sound of the side is nice, the spill is no problem. Yes. It's just a problem if it's kind of strange distorted in terms of the frequency response. Yep. Because then you, you turn up one microphone and all of a sudden the, micro, uh, the, the instrument next to it starts to sound strange because the off axis sound is not good. We have a really, really great, stable off axis sound. Yeah, that and way, you know, it's not a nuisance necessarily. You don't necessarily need to get that isolation between the different yes. instruments. It's more like it can create cohesion in the mix. Absolutely, you can yeah. create depth. That's great. I, there, yeah. Al Smith, unfortunately, he mm -hmm. passed away. Um, he's always said uh, Spill is his friend. Yeah. Right? He yep. can create, he, uh, he only used Omni mics. But, but you have you need good mics to do that. Okay, the OD5 and the OC7, they are our latest models. Uh, we released them a year ago or something like that. Um, and they are meant to be used in for close micing, instrument mics. So again, we have a nice feature set, like pad and low cut. Um, the cool thing about the OD5, it's, that's by the way, that's a dynamic microphone. OD the o always stands for open, open uh, acoustic. That's that's a principle in our in our microphone design in general. You also see it here. Yeah, on these microphones we're using. Cool. Yeah, we are using the OD505. Uh, I'm using the OD505. And what you am I using, using here? The, the OD303. So oh, this correct. is an active version like this one, and you would just have the classic passive uh, microphone. Cool. And you see one one difference is mine has a low cut, your doesn't. I see. Because you, yep. you can't have a low cut on a uh, passive uh, microphone design. Yeah, so what is the benefit of that open design? It's really about getting sonic from all sides to the capsule because only if you have that, you can create a stable um, polar, a polar pattern, pattern right? yeah. over a wide frequency range. That's exactly why our microphones have a really, really good uh, gain to feedback um, specs. Wow, okay? yeah, that makes sense. Because of that. So, yeah. Some people say, oh my God, it's open at right. the back, it's going to have feedback. The opposite right. is the truth. Well, and that's why, you know, when someone holds a microphone yeah. like this, it that's tends to feed it back because it exactly. needs that sound off axis yes. to create that polar and, pattern. And, right? and some, yeah. it, that's also a, a kind of a nice side effect from this design. Is now, no matter how you grab this, it's, it's almost not possible to really hmm. block all, uh, all the... So cool. it doesn't become an Omni and it doesn't change the sound. So, but we've been with the OD5, so it, again, same, same, same idea, active dynamic mic. And it has some special low cut filter, mm -hmm. which is uh, engaged at 80 hertz, and we call it the cap filter. Cap stands for cut and boost, or even for using, use it on the cabinet. Because uh, yeah. um, you get rid of the rumble under 80 hertz, but you boost at the same time at this fre frequency. So you get you you really support you know the um, the ground level of the of the the the, the ground harmonics yeah. of the of the instrument, which is useful on, on guitar amplifiers, useful on toms probably. I also got a feedback from a double bass player who who, who said he loves oh, yeah. this low cut. It, it leaves his double bass almost like a finished, it doesn't have to mix a lot anymore, finished yeah. sound. That's the power of a good mic, yeah. 
OC7 condenser version, same thing. We have a pad and a low cut, not this special cap filter. It's just a normal second order low cut. Okay, it's a condenser, so that means it's a, it's more it's more pristine, it's clean, it's very snappy, um, it's it's very fast. So that's really cool on drums. I, I I tried it out and it's 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 amazing. Here we have another CCA, so that's, that's oh, yeah. we talked oh, about it Same already. Yeah. So, yep. so we can. I love how you guys have the instruments there for us to play. Yeah, you, you know, know we, because we're going to use these on an instrument, not necessarily on our voice. Ab so yeah, yeah, I haven't absolutely. Seen other, and, and at the, the other booths. Those, they, they are nice because they have a really nice clean tone. Yep. So you can hear, and they have peak, and with this one you can just. You know, walk around the microphone yep. and see how the, the polar pattern and off-axis response. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So here you see our vocal mics, and they kind of follow the same principle. Like we have a condenser version. It's called the OC707, right? OC7 on the instrument, mm -hmm. OC707 on the handheld. Yep. Um, next to it is the OD505. That's the microphone I'm talking with right now, and the OD303. That's the one you have in your have hand. Right here. Right? So what is the active design? You know, many times you're out there on the road and you probably don't have the greatest preamp with you. Yep. So, and we know if you, if you have a, a quiet voice, you have to crank up the, 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 the gain of the preamp and many preamps start to become noisy if you go above 45 at least to mm -hmm. be. And they also start to sound sinny because they're just, you know, the one, one a circuit is, it has to do the whole amplification. Yep. That's why we have stepped gain preamps in the studio, right? Yeah. Because it's different circuits. Um, and so they, they just don't sound good in the higher levels. So you get six to eight dB more gain cool. out of this uh, output, out of this microphone at the same gain level. Yep. And that really helps to have a good sound. So it's a dynamic mic, but we're actually sending phantom power to it to yes. power that internal Absolutely. preamp, yeah. right? Cool. Yeah. Even if you have 150 meters, uh, no problem. It, you won't have any high frequency roll off, which you have on passive design. Now tell me about these large diaphragm yeah. condenser mics that you have right here. Yeah, yeah. So it's OC818. It's our flagship. It's a multi pattern yeah. um, microphone, large condenser microphone. And we have the OC18. That's the fixed cardioid. Okay. Same acoustics. They sound the same. But if you don't want to deal with polar patterns, you can take this one. And the OC16, it's kind of our entry-level microphone. It has the same capsule, but it's not handmade in Vienna, and it's not okay. matched. All other microphones from us here, they come out, out of the factory matched. So they have a sensitivity of plus minus 0.5 dB at 1K, all of them. So And it's, it stays like that. And you're able to do that because it's a ceramic capsule, is that correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, have, I have it here. Yeah. Um, so, you see the shining ring here, that's the ceramic frame. And the cool thing about ceramic is it doesn't age and it can be produced in really tiny tolerances. So that, that's why all of them sound the same. Yep. Right? And they all get measured really, really intensely before they leave the factory. Awesome. Okay. I have this microphone at home. There's a video on the Audio University channel about stereo microphone techniques where I use this video. Really powerful for stereo microphone yeah, cool. techniques. But what I tell people is, you know, this is one of my favorite mics to use even if I'm just using the front capsule. Yeah. And you can use this microphone and get the same tonality, right? Yeah. Which, which I highly recommend. This is one of my favorite microphones. I don't have this one, but it's effectively the same thing with it just is, a single capsule. It's the same capsule. thing. It's just, yeah. it's just a, a, not a dual capsule. Yes, that's right. right. Cool. Uh, one cool feature is... Oh, yeah. Come check this out. ...is this app. So if I switch the microphone to the very right position, I can now remote control the microphone from any iOS or Android device via a Bluetooth connector that is connected here. I can switch low cut, I can switch the pad. And the cool thing is it's flawless. So you can really find the perfect setting to get the right amount of proximity effect for your purpose, for your instrument recording or your voice recording, speech, whatever. Yep. You can store presets, of course, and the cool thing, it stays in here. So even if the, you've used the microphone on another um, setting, you won't lose it. The last thing you have done here stays in here. Nice. Okay. What I love also is uh, if you bring this around to the back, 
it has another output here yeah, when, to where you can record both yeah. at the same time and do this after the fact, yes, right? Yes, now we have the, the Bluetooth co adapter connected. Yep. Instead of that, you can connect another output cable. You have two XLR outputs then. Yeah. And then we have here the software on Pro Tools. There is the Polar Designer. It allows you to do different polar settings in different frequency ranges. Mm -hmm. With the Stereo Creator, you can change stereo techniques between MS, XY, and Bloomline in post-production. Yeah, really and the cool. Ambi Creator allows you to do 3D audio recordings. Yeah, and again, that video goes through all of that, so check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. Hey, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. I love your stuff. Um, I'm excited awesome. to see what you come out with next. All right.